before we get into the Jared Parker stuff, I did want to just spend a little bit of time on Gino Gadouli as we've been able to do a little bit more homework, a little bit more research, and just kind of come to the point of, of just really finalizing what this hire means for Notre Dame and then also sort of what Gino Gadouli needs to do. What's what's in front of him, Ryan? What's the task in front of him? And that's obviously what we'll discuss a little bit today. Then we'll get into the Jared Parker stuff. So, Ryan, obviously I had a gut reaction to the Gino Gadouli hire yesterday during the show. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a shocking revelation. I wrote an article yesterday. You and I talked about this the day before. We knew this was the direction that Marcus Freeman was going to go. I didn't expect it to happen yesterday during the show, but we knew this is what was going to happen. And so we've had some time to, to think about it and marinate on it and, and discuss kind of what this hire means for Notre Dame, what we think of Gino Gadouli and his task. So I'll just kind of give you, give you a first opportunity, Ryan, just to kind of just once again, kind of share your thoughts or your feeling and your reaction to what this move means for Notre Dame and, and being able to go out and get Gino Gadouli. I mean, I think it's a great perspective to have to first and foremost, right? I mean, I think that when you're talking about, we're going to talk about the Jared Parker stuff at nauseum, right? As far as what is it going to look like? What is it, you know, where is he going to find his bread and butter? Where is he going to really assert his image on the offensive play calling and what the, what the, you know, the, what the foundations are of the offense. But I think that one great thing that he has is he does have some nice supports around him, you know, and I think that's the first and foremost, when I heard that Gino Gadouli was going to be the, the quarterback coach, I'm like, that's a really nice perspective to have with Jared Parker. I think that's a great perspective because he's been an OC, although very abrupt time as an OC, but he's been a quarterback coach. He's been a passing coordinator He's been around some really good football teams, right? So I think that seeing that perspective on a day-to-day is going to be beneficial. And then the one thing that everyone in the chat has talked about for so long, and I do think it's very beneficial, is that now that you have an, a quarterback coach that is strictly just a quarterback coach, right? A guy to work with that room day in and day out and see through and not have his attention of diverted to another area or you know game planning, all that great stuff, you have a guy that is able to consistently be that presence in the room. So I think it's great for the quarterbacks. I think it's great for an inexperienced offensive coordinator that's obviously taken over at Notre Dame. And he has a good track record working with quarterbacks. You know, we've talked about what he did with Desmond Ritter over the last few years, which was phenomenal work, in my opinion. Really good stuff. So now you have all those things. And then also from the recruiting side of things, you know, I'm going to have a little bit more of a deeper update on this later, Brian, but I did have a chance to talk to a couple of the 2024 recruits, including Cam Williams, who Cam Williams has a very good relationship with Gino, Gino Gadouli. Very good. He talks about, you know, Gino's my man or something like that. He's like, that's my guy, right? So I think that when we're talking about, you know, what's the impact as far as the change and how guys are committed to the program and future classes, all that stuff – Gino Gadouli, from every person that I've talked to so far from the recruiting side of things, and this is directly to recruits, is that he is a very liked recruiter. Like, they really like Gino. They really do. They really like him. So I think that that is big time for help from the recruiting side of things. I think that it's a really nice perspective to have in the room, and I think that he's done really good work just developing quarterbacks. So I think it's a no – I, like I don't see any downside to this move, man. I just think it's a really good addition to a quarterback room that needs stability, in my opinion. I, I agree. And, you know, you talked about the recruiting aspect of it, Ryan. You know, we talked about this yesterday in the show. He offered C.J. Carr and developed enough of a relationship with C.J. that C.J. visited Cincinnati unofficially last March before he eventually made his decision to Notre Dame. So when he went on his, let me go look at the schools that I like, and the coaches I like is because that was right around if you if you go back and recall around March is when CJ wanted to commit to Notre Dame but his dad said hey let's hold off on that let's get out and see other schools and really make sure that this is what you want to do which I think is it's good leadership from a parent standpoint his dad kind of knew what was going on with the Dante stuff behind the scenes and 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 just wanted to kind of let things play out I thought that was good good job by Mr. Uh, Mr. Carl Nat. But one of the first schools CJ went and saw during that process was Cincinnati. Now, part of that's because geographic. You I mean you start the schools that are close to you, then you then you go visit Miami and some other places. But he did get down to Cincinnati and checked out Cincinnati. So I would imagine, and I haven't heard directly from CJ yet, but I would imagine that this hire is good. He's some he's going to be on board with. I would imagine. I, I, that's an yep. assumption. So I don't want to say for sure. 
so I think that that should help with that. And you talked about, you know, Cam Williams. One, I was talking with Sean Davis beforehand, and and we've both reached out to a lot of different people and about you know Gino and in, in the Midwestern the opinion that we've heard from people is this kid, it, this guy is a is a really good recruiter in the Midwest. Yes. Like everybody knows Gino. I mean, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, everybody knows who Gino is. And that's not just from, you know, he was a, he played football at Cincinnati, but he's done really a lot of work as a coach and he grinds. That's the thing that we hear as a, as a recruiter, he grinds. And so you're going to have a coach as well, Ryan, that's going to be focused just on coaching the quarterback position. Yep. I have said in the past, I have no problem with an OC being a quarterback's coach. So I, I never bought into the whole, you know, Quarterbacks coach coaches quarterbacks aren't coached well because the quarter the OC is the quarterbacks coach. I never bought into that stuff, but it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing either when you yeah. just have a quarterbacks coach. And so I think in this instance you're going to have someone that's going to whose in, whose entire process is going to basically be around the quarterbacks. But he's also someone who who has experience running a whole offense, who has experience being a, a a pass game coordinator. He's someone who has coached other positions. He coached the running backs in 2017 which you know I'm a fan of. So I think it gives a, a coach a greater appreciation for how everything works when you've coached other positions. So I, I, I don't think the hire – there's no downside to this hire from what we know. I think the fit will be fine. Again, he's a Kentucky guy. He went to Fort Thomas in, in Highlands, Kentucky, played at Cincinnati, has coached at Cincinnati. You know, he's, a, he's, he's familiar with what Notre Dame's all about. And so I think in those – and he's played the position. And he played yes. it – at a pretty good level. I mean, he's the the school's all time leader in passing yards, and he's second all time in in uh, passing touchdowns. The only guy that's passed him in passing touchdowns was his pupil Desmond Ritter, yep. right? And Desmond Ritter's number two all time in, in in passing yards behind Geno. So I think that I think that's a good hire. I think it's a strong hire, recruiting hire. It's a strong coaching hire, and he's a guy that obviously played the position, can relate to players. I think he's a younger guy, but he's not young. Right. right. I mean, he, he's he's more in, in kind of my generation as opposed to you know, some others. He played at uh, played at uh, Cincinnati in the early 2000s. You know, he's about 40 years old. He'll actually he'll be 40 next month. So he's young, but he's not like young, young. And I and I think wow. that matters a little bit, too. And, you know, played played professional football ish. You know, I mean, played for a few years in some different leagues, arena league, played had a was on the you know, obviously played at Cincinnati, was undrafted. Uh Spent a little bit of time trying to make the Titans roster. Spent some time in the in the I think the CFL. Spent some time in Arena League, and so that kind of pushed his coaching career back a little bit. He didn't get started actually until 2010. So, but he's been a college football coach for over 10 years, and you know, obviously, as we said, Ryan has done a really nice job in that regard. And where did he coach? Cincinnati and Central Michigan, right? That's yeah. it. And you know, recently was hired at Wisconsin and, and uh, Notre Dame obviously took him away from, from Luke Fickle there. And it fits with what Marcus Freeman has, has, I think really emphasizes and what we think he needs to emphasize, which is I know Gino, I worked with Gino. I know what he's all about. He knows what I'm all about. And if Gino didn't believe in what Marcus Freeman was doing, he's not leaving Luke Fickle in Wisconsin to come down to Notre Dame. 100%. And I think that's important. That's a very after everything that was happened. That's incredibly important, right? Well, well, Brian, you know how I am. After I know that somebody's on Notre Dame's radar becomes a hire by Notre Dame, I go and I just watch every interview on YouTube I can find. Man, I was listening to the press conference for Gino. I was listening to him being mic'd up on the field. One thing I really like is he, and this is something that has been. Jared, this is how people have described Jared Parker as far as pe- coach players that have been under him and recruits and all that type of stuff. There's an energy about him, which is really cool, man. Like I, I, I think that he's – and it makes sense that Gino is a respected recruiter on the trail because there's just like – this is like – He's got kind of like a, a funny but like awkward personality a little bit, and but he, he carries himself really well, but he's just really relatable, it sounds like to me. So I think that he will do a good job recruiting, and I think that he's relatable for the players that are on the staff as well. So I, I just get a really good vibe of the energy that he brings to the table. So I'm a fan of it, man. Like I said, I, I, I really don't see a downside. You know, his resume is good. He's a younger guy. He – you know, has specialized in the position that he's going to be coaching. He's got experience calling a ga- calling an offense, calling a passing game. Like, there's just really not a downside to it, in my opinion. Here's another part of it too, Ryan. I mean, you are going with a coach who is a who's been a coordinator for two years. That's it. That's not inexperience, but it's not experience either, 
right? You have a guy that's transitioning into, uh, he's really just in, going into his second year at Notre Dame. Having another coach with a background of calling plays, putting together a game plan and those type of things to me is going to be important. I think it, it, getting as many people with experience like that, the key, however, is you've got to be able to work together, right? Because you can have, like, I want a coaching staff where my my offensive coordinator, or all my position coaches are all really wicked smart guys with strong opinions, but they also understand that they're working together as one unit. And it's not about my ideas, your ideas, and your ego. It's, hey, we're going to talk ball. We're going to spit ball. We're going we're gonna to brainstorm. We're going to get on the board. We're going to break down film. We're going to challenge each other. Because that's what you do to come to the best thing that you're going to do. And, and I think that that's important. As long as they work well together, having someone with his background a year as an offensive coordinator at Cincinnati, obviously, last year, uh, having to fill the role of, of the things that they had to do at Cincinnati last year. He was a pass game coordinator for Cincinnati in 2020 and 2021. I've heard plenty of rumblings over the years that in 2021, Gino had a lot of the play calling responsibilities. It wasn't as much Mike Denbrock. A lot of it was Gino from the booth calling things down. So I don't know if that's true or not, but we heard those rumors before this all, all this happened. We heard those last year as well.